I have faith journaling ideas for you with my brand new kit, a new creation. I'll be showing you how to put it together, some quick and easy ways to decorate the cards, and some fun tricks to use up your scraps so you don't want to miss the end. Here we go, y'all. Well, hello and welcome to Pink Paper Peppermints. My name is Melissa and I'm so glad you're here today. I'm sharing my brand new kit, a new creation flashcard set, and it comes with a little mini Easter basket or just a mini basket. It's made with vintage gingham and vintage handkerchief linens. And I'm so excited to share with you how to put it together. It's got tabs and tags and a three by five card that we're gonna make a little special stand out of. It comes with five background papers and it comes with two sizes of flashcards. The flashcards have words that have to do with Easter and then the scriptures related to those. You can use them for scripture writing or you can use them for memorizing scripture or to decorate your journal or your Bible. Today we're just going to create a set of cards and I'm going to show you how to decorate them and then I'm going to show you some tricks for using up the scraps because those five background papers when you cut your pieces out like you see me doing here they are going to leave some little scraps that we're going to do some fun things with. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting around the the edges of the basket I'm not cutting out the scallops and the reason for that is it makes it hard to bend them down if you cut the scallops out first so what I suggest is go ahead and cut everything but those scallops and then go ahead and make your creases on the edges of those rows of scallops these are going to be the little scallops around the basket and you just want to give it a good crease you can use your fingers or a bone folder or a scoreboard if you want to but it's much easier to do it that way than trying to bend those scallops down individually and so you're just going to go around all four sides and do that and then you're going to be ready to cut and we're going to start with cutting the little triangles we're just going to cut on the side of the short flap on each triangle so you see I've cut there the sides on the short flap and then you turn it around to the other short flap and we're going to cut the triangle on the side closest to the flap and once we finish that we're going to make our creases so you're just going to go around and you see the four lines where the pink and the blue gingham meet we're going to crease those and then we're also going to crease the triangles on the side that we didn't cut so you just want to make sure that your creases are really crisp. If you don't have crisp creases, then it's going to be harder to get your basket to form into that basket shape. So once all your folds are creased, now we're going to go ahead and cut those scallops out. And just a quick tip for fussy cutting those scallops is you want to turn your paper rather than your scissors. And that's going to give you a nicer cut and it's going to be easier to stay on that half circle shape if you're cutting your paper, I'm sorry, turning your paper rather than turning your scissors. Okay, so now we've got that cut out and you see I've got some scraps here and I'm going to set those aside because as I said before, we've got some cute things to do but I wanted to show you you see how you can see some of the design on the white side of those scraps don't worry about getting your scallops perfect they don't have to be perfect they're gonna look cute even if you get them a little crooked so what we're gonna do is just fold those triangles over the short ends of the basket and I'm just giving one more crease to make sure my creases are nice and crisp and then I'm gonna glue and I have been using Fabrifix as my glue lately which seems strange for paper but I've really been liking it because it doesn't wrinkle my paper and it dries really fast and that is something that I don't like about wet glue is it takes so long to dry so I've really been enjoying that so once you put your glue on make sure you don't put too much line up those edges and then press and hold and give it just a minute to adhere before you move on to the next one. Once you get all four of those corners glued, you're, go you're gonna wanna set it aside and let it dry for just a minute before you attach the handle. So these are the cards that come with the kit. Now these come in colors and in neutrals, and I've designed the basket so it's four inches one way for the little cards, and it's five inches the other way for the three by five cards. So you'll be able to fit both sizes in the basket. This sheet has the handles, some tabs for the cards, and there's large tabs for the three by fives and small for the minis. And actually you can mix and match them. I put the large tabs on the minis and they looked really cute that way too. There's also a couple of little tags that you could use if you wanted to give this as a gift. And the three by five card that I told you about. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use that for in just a minute. So let's go ahead and put the handle together. We've got some more scraps to use later. And you're just gonna overlap it slightly, maybe about a half 
an inch to an inch. Use your glue, press and hold, and again, you wanna let that dry so, because we're gonna be putting some pressure on it when we bend it. So let that dry for a few minutes. If you're gonna be using four inch cards, you're gonna put it on the long sides, and if you're gonna be using the five inch cards, you're gonna put it on the short sides. And I'm using the five inch cards for this basket, so I'm gonna glue it to the short sides. And you're just gonna line it up in the middle, add your adhesive, and then press and hold until it gets a good hold and then let, set it aside and let it dry for a few minutes before you do that other side. Once it's dry, go ahead and attach the other side. And again, I would let it dry for a few minutes before you do anything else to it. But that's it, your basket is complete. You could add ribbon to it and I added one of my little clear butterflies to it too and it looked really cute. So this is the three by five card that you can actually use it as kind of like a dashboard in your set of cards. You could back one of your cards with it. You could use it as its own card and decorate it. I have some lines that you can just barely see. They're a half an inch in from either end and we're gonna make a stand out of this. We're gonna fold it in half, as you can see I'm doing here, and then where those light white lines are, we're gonna fold the edges up. They're about a half an inch. We're gonna fold them up on each end where those lines are and this is gonna create our stand for our basket. So this stand is great for just putting one card on it. Maybe you want to just put one on your desk to remind you of a word that uh, or a scripture that you're trying to memorize. But it's also great for inside the basket to hold your stack of cards up as you're building that stack up so they don't fall flat in the basket. You can just put that stand in the back behind your stack and it'll hold them up. So these tabs, rather than cut them out individually for the larger ones, what I did was to cut them out into strips so that I could then run them through my typewriter. You could also stamp your titles on them or handwrite your titles or even try running it through the printer depending on what type of cardstock you print it on. So I've got these all typed and I'm just gonna cut them out. And now I wanna show you a little trick with the little gift tags that I've included. You can also use these as tabs. If you prefer a square tab, just cut the top of the tag off and it makes a great little tab on your index cards. So now let's talk about some ways we can decorate these. Here I've just sewn on a silk flower and my tab and then a little scrap of lace on the side. On the next one I've added some pom-pom trim and I just stapled one of the tabs on with my Tim Holtz tiny attacher. Here I've sewn some ribbon and my tab on in the top corner. On the next one, I've added some lace and a tab with sewing with my sewing machine. I've added some pom-pom trim and more flowers, some fabric scraps. On this one, I used a tag that I had and I just sewed it on as if it was a tab, but I love that pink twine hanging down. Here I've used a vintage silk flower and some ribbon trim and I can just add my tab there with that. And you can see how pretty these look all stacked up in the little basket. I think this would make a great gift as well. So let's talk about some ways we can use all those leftover scraps. One of my favorite ways is to just use my favorite punches, which is usually the heart shape, and punch out little shapes to use on my tags. So I would take a heart shape like this and I would just stack up some other scraps, some scraps from this pink gingham and some doily scraps and then put my little heart on the top. And then I would just staple that whole stack together to decorate the corner of my tag. That's a great way to use those scraps. And then I just like to add a little twist of ribbon at the top and maybe a silk flower to finish it off. And then you have a perfect little tag in just seconds with leftover scraps. So this is a tag that I've cut from a children's book and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna pull out scraps from my leftovers there with a little bit of doily and a ticket. And one of the things that I like about layers is I like to put maybe 10 or 11 layers sometimes. And so when you use scraps, you can make it look like you have a full piece of paper in your stack when you don't really. This is the end of that tag that we cut the top off to use as a tab, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the tag. Here's another punch, and you can use that cutout of the punch as well. You see there, the color shows through the back. And so now I'm just adding that little punch, and I'm gonna add some beautiful seam binding to the top. And again, we have this gorgeous tag that was created really just from cast-offs with the exception of the seam binding. So now I'm just adding a few more little scraps and our tag is complete. Now this last technique that I wanna show you is my favorite, it's a lot of fun. This is a scrap from those tabs that we cut out and I'm just taking some Dilutions spray ink, which I'll link below, and spraying over that and using it as a stencil. And you see I 
Got some overspray there in my excitedness and a pretty paper towel to use later. And I'm gonna take that scrap off and we can use that later as well on another piece. And now I'm gonna take my tag and I'm just gonna add some gesso and I'm using Jane Davenport gesso. And that is just to kind of tone down that bright pink. I wanna tone it down a little bit and I wanna kind of blend together that manila tag with the pink. And by adding that gesso over the top, I'm blending those two together. Now I'm just gonna take a little piece of tulle and a little Tim Holtz antique person die cut thing. And I'm just gonna stack those all together with a silk flower. And I'm just taking that silk flower apart and deciding how much I wanna use. And I'm gonna staple that in the bottom right-hand corner with my Tim Holtz tiny attacher. This is a little devotional that I bought at the thrift store for 25 cents. And I use it to cut phrases when I'm doing collage. And so I've just found a phrase that I like. I just kind of glance through and pick one that I like. And I'm using the leftover gesso on the brush to attach that phrase to the bottom of my little die cuts there. And when I choose these phrases, I don't really match them to the image that I'm using. I just kind of pick what is standing out to my heart at the time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up or share it with a crafty friend. I will be back next week with part four of my junk journal flip through. And in the meantime, I hope you have a week filled with peace and grace. And I will see you next time here on Pink Paper Peppermints.